So, without any further ado, uh, I'd like to welcome you to this evening's um, webinar on goalkeepers. Uh, so, what we're going to talk about is a goalkeeper's perspective from a playing point of view. Um, and hopefully we'll get some out of it. I'm Claire Dowdell and I am the National Referee and Player Development Officer for Ladies Football here. And I have two very, very fine guests with me this evening. Um, first of all, I have my work colleague, Ian McLaughlin. He's an Ulster Development Officer and a renowned goalkeeper in Derry. But people say he likes to think he's a, more of a midfielder than a goalkeeper, but never right, Aiden? Um, yeah, this whole, this whole trend that everybody's using now, I was... I was doing it 10 years ago, losing the ball and getting a lob from the halfway line. So um, um, it's, it's old in my book, but now, yeah, brilliant. Excited to be on and, and get loads of debate and questioning going as well. Yeah, Aidan's not only been a goalkeeper his whole career, he's been very modest there. He's also been hugely successful in coaching in with Derry. Um, they've had huge success at underage um, and he's, he's still playing away and still coaching away. So throw any questions you have with him. Uh, we also have Elaine Hart on with us this evening. Uh, the top left of my screen, I don't know where she is in your screen. Um, Elaine has so has done so much in the game and we're delighted to have her on board. She has just the eight All-Ireland medals. Um, she also has club All-Ireland medals, of both intermediate and junior, uh, an array of Munster titles. Um, she was an All-Star goalkeeper in 2008 and 2012. Uh, and she's also then moved from her native of Cork which she loved so much, up to become a temporary woman, I believe. Um, and she's been really successful in her own ladies game uh, with being the manager of the temporary minors when they won the B All-Ireland. Um, and that's not even the accolade of the coaching she's done in her club. And Elaine's took a really interesting role of being the temporary men's goalkeeping coach this year. So hopefully we'll hear a bit about that. Um, so Elaine, we're delighted to have you on board. I thought I would say it because I didn't think you would say all that yourself. Um, so welcome, <laughs> Elaine. Thanks very much, Claire. I don't even, I wouldn't even remember half of that. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> that, see, I knew the modesty was there, and that probably brings us in, Elaine. If you maybe want to just share your goalkeeping journey with us. Um, yeah, so I suppose I, I don't know how good my internet is here now because I, I feel like I'm breaking in or break, um, but I keep going in and you can stop me as I go if there's a problem. Um, but yeah, I started, I suppose, in playing football with my local club, White's Cross, and um, they were the, there was a boys club there, there with them, I kind of got going in football and I got into, um, they, I remember playing in goal for the hurling team there for the start of era, I was probably about 12 or 13, I suppose, because it we kept going there. And then I went on to play soccer with Wilton and Wilton United, the soccer club in Cork City. And uh, then I, our one time, I was playing on field the whole time and our goalkeeper got injured. And uh, they said, sure, you play football, you might, you'll be able to catch the ball anyway, so we might see how you get on. And uh, yeah, I kind of did fairly well there and I stayed there for a bit and I kind of, I got um, called up to the urgent underage team so then it transferred that the local I, I moved then to play with Rock Bowen which had been the ladies club that got set up there um, and after, after I suppose they got set up when I was 19, 18 or 19 and then they they heard that I was playing in goal for the for the Irish team so they said we'll, we'll try you out there and see how it goes and then I kind of I enjoyed it and I enjoyed playing goal and I got called up then to the Cork senior team um, after we had played the second club all Ireland Intermediate All Ireland, I think that was two thousand and one. So yeah, that was that's kind of where I started. Um, um, what age, Elaine? That's really interesting. What age did you transfer from an outfield player in the goals? Um, cheapest. I I will say I played for for soccer. I would have played in goal when I was probably 16, 17, and I played the whole way up there. And then I played um, I played under 17 with the Irish team and under 19 with the Irish team for soccer. And then I was probably playing outfield the whole time until I was about 20 or 21. And then I, I, I played in goal then for the club, in the, for the club, uh, I think it was 2000, 2000 or 2001. And then I kind of played I was in goal ever since so actually I, when I came up here to Tipperary I actually uh, my husband always tells me I never won anything until I moved to Tipperary I moved to Tipperary <laughs> until in 2004 and I eventually transferred up here and I played outfield out here as well so I was kind of playing goal for Cork and outfield out here so it was a mixture of everything I enjoyed both of them so it's really good 
and and what sort of skill set do you think that the scene on you to put you in goals uh, and and you have been an outfield player as well so I suppose what I'm asking you is have you is there a different set of skills that you would have used for your outfield um when you've been inside in goals uh well I suppose yeah like you have to like number one a good goalkeeper first and foremost has to be a good footballer you know I remember Raymond used to always say that to us like uh Eamon Ryan our coach he was always say that like a goalkeeper has to be a good footballer you have to be comfortable on the ball so like whatever you're doing outfield if you're playing outfield uh you're going to be a little bit more comfortable on the ball if you're in goal do you know what I mean and you have to take control of the ball and you have to set up um you know you're setting up attacks as well you know or passing off the ball or whatever so yeah like then I suppose there is a, there is a difference obviously because it can be very um lonely in a face when you make a mistake like you know because when you make a mistake generally it's very it's highlighted hugely um you know uh whereas if you make a mistake outfield you could just turn around and pick up the ball you know whereas you don't have that luxury in goal so there's there's a, you have to have a good skill set and I suppose you have to have really like be really confident on the ball and really have good confidence in yourself and make sure that you know when you make a mistake that you kind of because we all will make everyone will make a mistake you just have to get on and get up with it like you know and Aidan you've obviously done a lot of coaching so what do you look in your what do you look for in your goalkeepers when you're talking about a skill set like I just um, love that quote Eamon Ryan he used to say he used, you had to be a good footballer and probably the days are gone where they said you know we'll stick them in the goals or oh, they're usually a side field or you know we just need somebody in there we'll, th- we'll throw you in there so like you're coaching at such a good level what are you looking for? Um, firstly he's 100% right in what he said there especially the, the, the amount the, the amount the goalkeeper gets the ball now the amount they receive the ball back even when they had a short kick out like we talk about confidence is a massive thing and self-belief because the goalkeeper is always going to make a mistake it's just the goalkeeper makes the least the least mistakes or we would have concentrated a lot on mastering the basics forget about setting out a hundred cones and all these fancy cones can they deal with a high ball can they get their angles right is their communication right are they a good footballer so we, we would have worked at our goalkeepers probably got dogged a wee bit because they would have done the full outfield session with the players they would have been out with the goalkeeping coach an hour before training. So they would have got all the goalkeeping stuff done before the actual session started. And then they would have joined the full session because we, we would have pushed massively for fun to be really good footballers. And the thing is now a lot of goalkeepers, especially at the top level, at county level, are playing outfield for their club. The Cluxton was always a big moment. It seems to be happening even more and more. I sort of, I have two, I have two county medals from a club. One was outfield, one was in Nets. And it was the one year they sort of let me outfield as well. So um, I just think the, the more com- comfort you have in the ball, and look, we would do a wee bit of camps in the summer and stuff as well. And it's becoming really fashionable. Even in the girls game, you're, you're trying to get eight, nine and 10 year olds in the, in the teams. And before it was, let's be a forward, let's be a defender. Now you're sitting there with 10 hands going up to be to be a goalkeeper. And that's maybe five boys and five girls. So it's, it's great to see as well. And, it really is, it's the toughest, and people say, oh, how can it be the toughest position in the pitch? It is a lonely place if you make a mistake. It is a lonely place. Now, well, that mistakes in Krug Park, Clonus, or in your own club pitch, it is a lonely place, and, and you need real mental strength to pull yourself out of that because one mistake can very easily lead to two, and that might be dropping the ball in the net. That could be kicking the ball over the sideline and, you know... <laughs> Which every club team and every county team is massive at it now. Team could be going a full press. They could be zonal marking. You're cl- you mightn't have prepared for this. It's it's what you're probably hitting what you have to see, and the movement might be great out the pitch, and a lot of pressure can come on, and you have to be really, really, really strong. And that that's something we look for. You know, you could be going up and playing a game up in the Dublin Belfast, and you're taking a look at two different goalkeepers, and one goalkeeper could have a brilliant first half. The goalkeeper second half could have a really tough half, but you could have taken your spine off. The same runners might be on. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking in riddles there now, but you're looking. I'm looking mental strength is a massive one because you are going to make mistakes. You are going to make a mistake, but it's how you recover and how that mistake doesn't lead to two, three, four, or five in a row. Uh, and are you working on that now at this stage with the goalkeepers? Their mental strength. Are you? Are you? You're looking. Look, they a good when you're. Say we're going through a checklist. What are you looking for? They've good pair of hands, great kick out, can read, 
the game, something that people maybe don't talk about, that they can actually see, you know, the play maybe before it happens. And now you're talking about this mental toughness. Do you talk about that with your goalkeepers? We we would we would have a thing. We spend a lot of time when we actually went to trips. Actually, just went over for a month to Australia. It was four or five years ago now. Um, then <laughs> it was sort of a consolation. Australia's ended up taking about ten of Derry's best young players in the last five years. So they gave us a wee token trip over to to see around Sydney Swans and stuff like that. So we looked into into what they were doing just with all their underage players. So from under 15s up in Derry, the players don't know this, but I remember the coaching staff would sort of look after four or five players and that's just a constant here. You meet them for a coffee on a Saturday. This continues in the off season as well. You're really looking to create a rapport with that player. And it is hard work. You're falling in self-evaluation sheets every couple of weeks. So if a player does need dropped, and this isn't just a goalkeeper or a player wants to know why this isn't happening, it's all there in front of them. But you really, you're really looking to develop that rapport with, with the boy or the girl. So there's total trust. And we would have a sort of model, you know, better people make better players. So get to know the person, get to know what's happening at home. How's school going? How's boyfriends, girlfriends, part-time jobs? Get to know that player. And I think, to be honest, by the time that we get to 18, 19, we've three years of research done and 90% of the players who are going to be attending the trial and you know 95% of the players you're probably going to be selecting. So the hard work is almost done by the time you get to a squad. and. Luckily in Derry, Roy Gallagher's came into the seniors and he's he sort of kept that that approach. And I know the senior ladies manager, Or McNeely, was in there. He stepped away. He had he had kept the same approach as well, where you know they're on that conveyor belt. They know what it takes to be a sort of county footballer, and you know you know everything about them. You know what makes them click. You know what makes them tick. So let's that's tough. And I know in a club environment that that is really really tough, but. We would begin the falling out evaluation forms at the end of every year as well. So if you finished up at under eights and you think, you know what, we have a couple of great wee girls there, you know, they, they mightn't want to play outfield, but geez, they're great handling, they're great footwork. That evaluation sheet would say to the under 10 management taking over. Lisa and Mary's best friends are Lisa and Mary go to this school. Lisa and Mary also do Irish dancing and camogie. Lisa and Mary's best attributes are this. Lisa and Mary probably need to improve in this to get the next step. So there's that constant conveyor belt. The whole like way a handover, so, you're basically hand, handing over, so, like you would a and, school report. Yeah, and I, I would look at clubs and it's just a clean slate to go in there every year. That coach starts from zero, whereas mm. a sort of new management team coming in know exactly what they have to work on and what they can improve. And, and Elaine, what about that element that we were talking there about you, like skill-wise, I seen you were nodding your head a couple of times, the psychological aspect of it. One, as a player, did you feel like you had that mental toughness side of it? And, and two, now as a coach? Would it be an aspect that you look at? Um, yeah, of course. Like as as Aidan said, there, like you have to your 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 errors are highlighted, so you have to be very strong strong willed and make sure that you forget forget about what's after happening on the pitch or whatever. Um, but it's huge. Like I think you just I suppose I was very lucky with the girls that I had around me when I was playing. Um, that like you know I, I don't ever remember being given out to for dropping a ball or being told you know that like um, oh why did you do better with a, with a kick out or whatever it was always the next the next ball or the next one or head up or keep going like you know because sure they all knew that I we, we didn't make a mistake on purpose or whatever we didn't kick the ball out like wrong in purpose and I was really lucky to have a really good team around me as well you know um, and I suppose they also knew that like if they didn't run for a ball either that like it was down to them too for a kick out as well. So like it was kind of very much a team a team uh, ethos for us as well. Um, kind of like what Aidan was saying as well that like you know we 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 lived and died together. You know, and we if we made a mistake, we all made the mistake, and we all kind of tried to build each other back up. You know, so yeah, and and now like I suppose I'm only. I'm in. I'm in with the with the tip men since about since January, you know, and it's just trying, still trying to get to know them all fully. And I think it's a very important part um, of of a co- of coaching is to get to know them and step by step. And I like you don't want to go. Try and try and be overly overly friendly and to build a relationship with people. It, it does take take an awful lot of time, but uh, we're getting there. But I think the, the whole ethos as well is like that we're working as a team and the same kind of thing as we had as um with Cork that like you know you you build each other up, you help each other when everybody makes a mistake, anyone makes a mistake, and it's all about I suppose like I said, a goalkeeper will be their mistakes will be highlighted much 
much more than an outfield player. And uh, when a goalkeeper makes a mistake, it's just to make sure that you build them up and make sure that their teammates are behind them and helping them. And like I said, I was very lucky with my team when I was playing with that, you know, and it helped me hugely. Like In terms of training, um, you know, if I was a goalkeeper on here tonight online um, and I have a bit of ambition about myself or I want to get better, if you could give me a couple of tips in terms of training, what, what type of training would you have done as a player and now as a coach, what type of training do you expect? And I suppose we'll go with you, Elaine, first. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I suppose as, as when I when I was a player, I would always. The, the, it's always the basics. I think Aidan was talking about it earlier on. Like it's it's the basics. Being able to catch the ball, going for a high ball. Like I used to batter the ball off the side of our house at home, and it was it didn't like I'd hit it hit it low, hit it hit it high, try and catch the ball. My making sure I've I've a good um, like the W shape in my hands. Even like we, I was very lucky actually. We had a grass patch behind the by the side of the wall, side wall, so I was able to kind of kick it and try and dive against it. Like I didn't need anybody; I could do it myself. So all that kind of stuff. Um, just keeping like like training with your with, like doing fast feet like turn like uh, if you had somebody with you just to make them turn to turn and to react to the ball but like there's loads of stuff just kicking the ball off the wall and, and catching it every time and, and improving getting kicking it up higher and catching it up higher like I must have spent hours upon hours off the side of the wall a wall doing that and that's very basic but that's what what I, I used to do and I remember um like especially you know a lot of people are afraid not afraid but there will be kind of diving might be it might be an issue diving on on we say hard ground and I would have always like when I was starting I like I know it sounds really stupid but I used to start I used to dive on the mattress at home and bed in bed trying to get my dive right to make sure that I had it correct um and once like I got that right I progressed then on to like going out onto the field and, and bring it onto that like so like once you get your diving technique right moving it out then onto the field and kind of like easing the pressure of of like going straight onto the pitch like sure surely I, I've never been a goalkeeper but surely the adrenaline helps with the diving does it you know you feel like yeah, you hugely. probably don't feel the pain until the next day really yeah, yeah, hugely, hugely, actually hugely, because I remember one day I, I really, I'd really hurt my my arm and a dive and I went on and I played away and it was uh, on, afterwards I realised I had like chipped a bone in my shoulder, you know, and I didn't realise it at all, but like the, it's, the adrenaline is huge, like, you know, it's massive, you make a save and it's, it just, it's just great, like, you know, if you could bottle it, you'd be a multimillionaire, you know. <laughs> It's mad because making a save is nearly you, you can see it lift teams. It's nearly like a score. Like if you if you're saving a a one on one or a really powerful shot, then I think you probably if you look back to the All Ireland final last year when Mon Monica McGurk made that save uh, for me against Dublin, like it nearly lifted. You actually could feel it around the stadium. I remember be coming along the sideline at that time, and you could just feel it in the crowd. And it must have been it must be an experience for a goalkeeper. That nobody else could never have. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. It's like scoring a goal. Like I've, I've thankfully I've been lucky enough to kind of experience both of them. But, um, like a save, like especially when when you're not meant to expect it to save it. You know what I mean? When it's one on one, it just the the euphoria there is cool. It's great. Like if, like I said, if you could bottle it, and it does. It's like you know, like a last minute block. A defender might make a last minute block on the goal line. It's it lifts the whole team. Like you know, it's huge. And like the best thing is like if you could if you can hold on to possession and then and then set up and attack from that. Then like you know, it's it's just it's just it's great. Like yeah. And in in terms of training for you, you know, if you're giving a couple of tips on here, what would it be? Um. <sighs> Like you're talking now, your counties would have a goalkeeping coach. Probably your top clubs would have a goalkeeping coach. But I would love to, I would love to think or say that most clubs, at no matter what level they're playing at, would have somebody maybe in the management team that would maybe do a wee bit with the goalkeeper. Now, you're talking there. If you can't like kicking the ball against the wall, what what Elaine said there is, is perfect. But even in terms of online, like the amount of stuff that you see in YouTube and Instagram now, just goal just stuff for ladies goalkeepers not even men's I'm sure if there's young goalkeepers online they're well aware of that and it's just getting someone to help them whether it's a brother or sister mama or daddy or the guy I remember it was my just to torture torture my dad come on come on just kick a few more high ones and just kick 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 but I think as well the kick outs is the kick outs such a massive thing now and the, the hard thing about that is 
it's a, it's the whole team thing. It's not even the goalkeeper just anymore. The full back line might have certain movements to make. Half back line, midfielders, half forward, middle eight. We would sort of call them your half backs, half forwards, and midfielders. That and if a team's not working on that, and it's it can make a goalkeeper look bad as well. But I would definitely think if a goalkeeper's getting down to training, they can do a wee bit before training if they can, or even for 10, 15 minutes after training, they can pull in a few of those players to maybe work work on a few kickouts as well. And I actually saw a girl a girl the other day just practicing off the ground. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I says, Oh, it's brilliant to see you doing that. And she says, oh, I'll play a wee bit of soccer, but uh 45, so you get two points for 45 off the ground now and no yeah. one else can hit them. And I thought that is absolutely brilliant. You could be gold dust to to yeah. your team here, to your county. <laughs> And, and that's probably the, the second thing that, you know, that you, as you say, the 45, if you can get a goalkeeper doing that, it's two points. Like it's, it's, it's a huge boost in the game. But the second thing is, I don't know how many people are aware, but from the 2nd of April in ladies football, it just passed in Congress. But all kickouts now are going to be from the 20 meter line. There's no more um, 13. So I don't know. How do you think that will change with the goalkeeper? That, that was a good uh, motion yeah. from Ulster there, Claire. Oh, was it in? You're taking credit? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not taking credit, but uh, it came. Uh, <laughs> but how many times yeah, you see yeah. maybe an underage game where yeah. means there could be a Gale Force one, the wee goalkeeper can't get the ball out and it's on the 13. And mm. It was nearly more more for that, more more for those yeah. reasons. And sure, we've all saw instances 10, 20 times a year and it's just, it's just not fair. And they may be bringing the full back in to hit the kick out, then they're a player down out the field. And yeah. Aline, do you think it'll have an impact? Oh yeah, hugely. Like I used to hate, I used to hate when um I have to kick from the thirteen line, yard line. Like it was, like it's hard enough. Like we don't. It, that's a huge. It's a huge disadvantage, especially because like our kicks aren't that long. Like a long kick out for ladies football is is like the longest one you'd see is nearly the halfway line. It's a very long kick out. Like, yeah. and if you're if you're under pressure, you're like it's if you if you make a mistake if you're under pressure, it's straight back on top of you. Like you know, and you, like especially for underage, like. They, that could just you could spend the whole half trying to get out of your own half like because you can't kick the ball out far enough you know especially if you're against the wind like Aiden was saying you know if it, and like we're well used to gale force winds like we like you still can't get them off out the pitch like you know it's really really that's demoralizing for some young kids that, and, and as they kick the ball and they see it coming straight back on top of them like so yeah 21 yet like it's still we still we're still it's it's we still can't kick it like fairly far like as far as we kick it is probably like I said halfway line like but um it's 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 a good it was a good motion i think i thought it was very good because uh it's i was <laughs> kicking my <around> 13 <laughs> i think <laughs> but I, like like i said i was very lucky and i think it made a very valid point earlier on that like like it's very good to come have all these tactics about um runs for kickouts and runs for all this but sure if you don't practice at a training how can you expect a goalkeeper to get it right on the day of a match if it's not practice or training you know so it's very important um and now we weren't like uh, I, I don't know if, if you remember Eamon was not very good good with the tactics we used to never have tactics like uh, the big tactic we had was that everybody had to run that was it <laughs> nothing else and you know but we practiced that at training like yeah. everybody had to run you know so that was it but like it was like you had to do it you had to run for the ball and that that, that meant I had like five or six options for kickouts so like we we did that at training and and you know I think it's very important that if you're expecting your goalkeeper to do something that like you practice at a training it's like you wouldn't expect your free taker to take a free without practicing at a training do you know our penalties do you know all that kind of stuff I think that was a wee secret tactic he had going on there because he ended up having six there options. Was a, there was nothing like secret about it or nothing, nothing uh, overly complicated about it. It was just run, hard work. Claire, I think a big one there is how many coaches ask their goalkeeper what side they're more comfortable kicking it to, because. Yeah they could be asking the goalkeeper to kick across themselves as a right footer out to their right. And that's, that's a lot harder kick for a right footer. Whereas a, a right footer kicking across their body to their left is, is a lot easier kick to that wing. So teams can shape up. If I know, if I know, I know Elaine's a lot more comfortable kicking to her left. We can overload in the left. She'll have to move her whole body around to kick that ball out to her right. Uh, we can shift across. Like, and it's even a club level, those wee things are happening now. So, if you can even get your goalkeeper getting really comfortable kicking the both sides, and especially when they're kicking to their side, not having to shape. I'm actually trying to act it out here now. You know, it's yeah, not I can right, see but, <laughs> um, 
shape in their body and having to take two or three steps across, I think I think it's massive if you can get a girl comfortably kicking off both sides. Even if she could kick it short off her left, I'll not say weaker, last use foot, 15, 20 yards um, with her weaker foot, that would be a massive, massive, massive advantage. I think that's key. And, and then what do I do if I'm a club player still at ladies football level and I go to training and I've been to, we've had 10 training sessions Training started in January and we haven't did a thing for goalkeepers. Like, what can yeah, I do? You, you have to torture and you have to torture the manager. You just have to torture them and even pull. You're always have a few injured players. Even just say, here, I'm going to do half an hour, half an hour here about a goalkeeping work. Here, Sinead's over there. She's she's out for a couple of weeks. She's a bad ankle. At least she can maybe throw the ball or use her other foot and have a wee session, maybe done up in your head. As I said, online, YouTube, Instagram is filled with stuff now and it doesn't have to be a hundred cones set out it can be really just simple and basic the more touches the better and elaine would you agree you you have to put yourself forward and say look yeah definitely definitely like like i suppose if, if your aspirations are to be um in goal like and you just have like you have to be kind of like you have to be confident to be able to go up to the go to the coach and say look i just need 10 minutes even 10 15 minutes every training session and work on footwork one week and footwork on distribution the next week work on handling work on high ball work on fast feet work on reactions work on different things every single week and you know even if you got 10 15 minutes every week you like that's hugely huge compared to like getting nothing and then getting st- stuck in goals to take to to be expected to sh- stop shots that are driven at you do you know what i mean it's it's huge a huge advantage to you if you get like 10 10 15 20 minutes of goalie specific work every training session and like aiden said even if you did it after training like 10 15 minutes isn't enough lot to wait wait around afterwards and like you could do some sh- kick outs there as well if you had like five or six pairs extra to to to, to stay around and, and just to work on it a little bit but yeah you need to have a little bit of confidence to be able to go to your coach and go look i just need 10 minutes 10 15 somebody to help me do it even if it's another manager or another selector or somebody anybody that'll help out so we're, we're, we're saying now uh, anybody online listening it's a goalkeeper put your hand up and tell them you want a bit of assistance you know you have to be brave you have to communicate and it sort of brings into to the communication to me for a goalkeeper um communication is so important it, it seems to be such such like they're the leader of that back line they can see everything and um, I, I've actually always said I always find goalkeepers are a wee bit mad. You two may disagree with me, but um, any team I've played on or coached, the goalkeepers always been a wee bit mad, but been really, really good communicators. So, how important is the communication aspect of it? Well, yeah, like it's huge. I don't know. I'm I'm only hearing every second word. I can you hear me there? Am I all right? Yeah, yeah you're okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Um. So, like, communication is huge. Like. You know, I, I use, for, there's two, there's two main reasons that communication is for like your back line to organize them, to tell them where to go, tell them to push up, tell them to come back, tell them there's a free player or tell them to get closer or whatever. Um, and just to instruct, instruct them where to go or what to do. But also for me as a, as a goalkeeper, like to keep me focused, I need to be, I needed to be talking. And like, sure, I'd say the girls were sick of listening to me. Like I was a commentator behind them kind of telling them what was going on, you know, and I would just, for me, just to keep my head in the game, to keep my, um, to keep my head right. And I'm just laughing because I can still remember my brother used to be like, when the games that were televised, he's like, I can hear you on the television (laughs) shouting to the girls, like, you know, (laughs) so it was, um, it was just, it was just to keep myself motivated more so, or not motivated, focused and concentrated on the game, but also like hugely to talk to the girls. But I suppose the most important thing, if you when you are talking to them and to giving them direction, it has to be simple and specific because like there's no point in me saying, uh, who's marking number 10? Sure, nobody's going to answer you that. Like, you know, you have to say like, Sinead, you have to get yeah. closer on number 10, you have to get closer, you just have to be, or you know, go to your left, go to your right, you, you need, or whoever it is, cut, give a name and give a direction, be specific about it, because it's very, that's very important. Aidan? No, no, definitely. And something I would have learned, a, a manager said to me, it was after maybe an under 21 championship game against Tron. He says, I love your communication. You, you, you've just communicated brilliant the way through, but you're talking too much. And it's something I've took on. He was right. I was, and it was more to keep me focused and right yeah. as well. That's why. 
But I'm out there and standing in the 45 and I'm falling out with their full forward and I'm getting involved and just taken away completely, completely from my game. And it was, it was 100% right. And it's something I've took on. Still, you're always, you have to be very direct, as Elaine said there. There's no point, who's on 10, who's on 10? It has to be precise to the point. It has to be heard. But don't shout for, this, for the sake of shouting. If things are okay at the back, you know, you don't have to shout all the time. And like, I'm not as bad anymore, but I used to come off and my head, my head would be pounding at the end of the games just from screaming, talking and shouting. And you'd just be physically drained. I'm sure Elaine, she played in front of massive crowds. I'm sure she was the same. But People couldn't you, understand. How do you keep the focus, Aidan? You know, how, and I'm really intrigued to that. As a goalkeeper, I think it's really hard because you mightn't get any action for 10 yeah. minutes, 15 minutes, and then the next minute, boom, it's on top of you. How, like, have you a tip throughout your career of how you stay tuned in? I remember we would have done a lot of video analysis and I, I clearly had like a nervous twitch to sort of stay, to sort of stay switched on. Every maybe 10 seconds, I was just touching, just jump and touch the crossbar. And I never did the, I never even knew, knew I did it. My, my wife complains now because I wear white undershorts and I must rub my gloves on them because they come back bogging. She's sitting scrubbing them on a Sunday night. So um, just, the water break was brilliant because I thought 15 minutes, get to the water break, 15 minutes, then it can reset, go again. Now the water breaks out and it's gone from ladies in the 1st of April. So I would nearly just, I would nearly just have an umpire. You know yourself at the same games, the same people do umpire just to, after every 15 minutes now, I would just end. Right, just stay focused, just stay focused, just stay focused. And because we all are a bit crazy, I don't care what anyone says. We all <laughs> are. We can, we can, we can lose focus, but and uh, to late- concentrate. Elaine, what about you? Would you have any wee hacks or anything you would have done? No, I think like for me, it was just, I was just talking all the time. (laughs) But I was mainly just talking to keep myself in the game. Now I wouldn't be shouting, well, maybe I was, but I wouldn't be shouting all the time, but I would have been talking, trying to keep my head in the game. Or, you know, if if somebody made a good, or made a good run, or if they made a... um, I run and never. I didn't get the ball. I would be kind of like going, "Great run, Joe. It was great. You you created space. Well on. Keep going." So I was trying to motivate everybody. I was kind of like trying to motivate them from myself more so than trying to trying trying to keep them going as well. But also to kind of keep myself motivated so and focused. So yeah, like I I didn't really have huge. Uh, I was always touching the crossbar or doing something <laughs> different. But yeah, no, I I was kind of talking. I was a bit of a talker, so it was hard to shut me off by so else. But it. Came Kind of had, it had a double like I had a it was to kind of keep me in the game and make sure that I was focused I think more so yeah and the other big thing I've noticed in the last while especially the last couple of years is how the role of the goalkeepers changed and, and I must say it terrifies me like you know I do, it's when I see that goalkeeper going, going out of the goals my heart is in my mouth and we've seen Loads of great examples that more in the men's game. I think with I, this year in the league, I have seen it slightly in the ladies' game, but I think it's still more conservative. You know, you wouldn't see them up at midfield. You might see them coming out to take a pass to be the extra player to get across the 20 or, the, you know, 22 metre line and then the 10 to go back into the goals again. I haven't really seen anybody really venturing too far out, but do you think it's coming down the line? Do you see benefits of it or... You know, how is it the game changed so much in terms of the goalkeeper and how do you prepare yourself for it? Well, I can, I can see from this, like, the, like sometimes we say with the, with the, with the girl, with the ladies uh, game, you can see that they're they're getting much more involved in the game. Like like you're saying, they're kind of like switching the play back to the goalkeeper and you can go to the other side. Um, and that's usually, um, that's that's much more from when from when I was playing, like I, I rarely would have gone on the ball um, in, in open play or maybe once or twice or whatever but it seems to be happening an awful lot more now um, but like you said in, in the men's game it's huge and I think it's something that might might crop in like I see uh, like the Tipperary goalkeeper here Lauren Fitzpatrick is very comfortable on, on the on the ball and she's often gone up to the 45 and even the halfway line with the ball and and, and sometimes your heart will be in your mouth but she's very comfortable on the ball so I, you don't mind it like she's she plays she plays well she doesn't really play outfield with her club but she's really comfortable on the ball but like even the with the with the men you see it's they're, they're they're scoring from 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 open play now you know which is like I suppose if you're if you're 
ready for it and you know that as a, as a defensive unit you know that, that the option is there the goalkeeper like we said earlier is a good goalkeeper um you you kind of can adjust to it um but sometimes sometimes if we just worry to that it might that it mightn't work out but like 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 we said a goalkeeper has to be a good footballer and they, if they're comfortable on the ball what's the difference is a goalkeeper going up than uh another full back so the full back could just slip in and and if the ball does game does if it does break down they should be there do you know what i mean they should be able to play there as well but i do think it, it'll it probably won't they, they probably won't be as as far up the field as the men will but I can see the goalkeepers getting much more involved in switching the play over from left to right if there's a if there's a if there's a break on the on the left and if something happens they need to go back and go to the right side I can see that kind of coming in and I see um uh, the me goalkeeper Monica Monica gets yes. so she does that a lot like in her in her game as well and like uh, I think they, I think Dublin tried to do it at the weekend and unfortunately they kind of there was a goal from it you know yeah. so like I suppose you have the, the thing is you have to know when to do it and when not to do it and uh that'll only come a practice as well but there'll be a few mistakes i think before they get it right <laughs> yeah and i think that's that's it when it works it's going to work well and when it doesn't work as we said from the start the pressure's on the goalkeeper then it's like it's a yeah. big it's a big score and something it's sort of i always think yes the goalkeeper's going out but if it breaks down it's maybe a full back or a cornerback jumping into goals to try and last pitch defend they're probably not great stop shotters you know because they haven't been a goalkeeper and you're you have to try and weigh you know is it worth it um but each team's just trying to get that extra bit of edge but the the role that the goalkeeper is going to have in this going forward like in what are, what are you going to do you, you you obviously, I know I've seen you play. You you love being you love being out of goals, so I don't think you have much of a problem. I'm finding it tougher to get back. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of the ladies' game, you're obviously you're doing a lot of coaching and around the ladies' game as well, and in and around obviously, you know, are you just having to do an extra bit of work with the goalkeepers to, to get we, for this? We we have the school's all stars team, and like they're obviously not going down to Kinnegad this year, but we still we still ran the trials and stuff. So we took half the group. Uh, I'll not forget this. The 4th of January, we took half the group to pitch in our mat to play Carrick McCross, who were preparing for a All-Ireland Junior semi-final. So we had a girl. She's played every National League game for her county this year. I'll not name the county. And Carrick McCross were hitting a kick out. I'm looking down the pitch. This girl's running up the pitch. I'm thinking, what is she? What is she doing? She was out competing, and we were going to pull up. We said, "Say nothing. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens here." She had the game of her life. She was acting as a sweeper. She was picking up ball everywhere. So I actually went and watched her county play, and she was doing the same for her county. So it's clearly something that her her county's been been working on. But I'll not name the county because I think they might have a league final. Maybe well, they were beat yesterday, but I'll not say anymore. Um, I definitely think I definitely think it's it's gonna it's gonna seep in as Elaine said. I don't think it'll go to the Nile Morgan, Roy Began styles where they're going up. I, I do think that is people have to remember Nile Morgan plays midfield for his club in Tyrone and they're a senior club team. And to be honest, Nile Morgan's probably good enough to be an outfield player in the Tyrone squad. Roy Began was caught badly twice against yeah. Kerry. It's that it's that risk for reward. We might get two points or create two goal, two point scoring opportunities out of our goalkeeper attacking here. But if I'm setting up against that, I'm setting traps all day for that goalkeeper to make a mistake or that goalkeeper be caught in a certain part of the pitch. So I, I think it might turn back slightly in the men's game again because every Sunday night you're turning on the Sunday game, a team's conceding a goal from it. And I think it might start to turn back if it happens in an Ireland semi or an Ireland final. It, it's as Elaine said and you said there Claire it's when when to go once or twice a half I think is fine but seeing it happen six seven times a half I, I think is absolutely mad I think it's crazy it, it's, it's the risk isn't it and I, I don't know just me personally like you're both keepers I, the pressure it must put the goalkeeper under must be horrendous like that's an other added bit of pressure onto the keeper on top of making sure that their kickouts are spot on that their shot, shot stop is ready to go, that they have their defence organised, you know, and now they're expected to get up the pitch as well. So it must be a lot I'll, of pressure I'll an, being a keeper. I'll give an example, Claire. So you're talking about all those things. And now a lot of the county teams now are sort of working on a short kick out from the goalkeeper, corner back, 
half back comes hard off him, gives it to the goalkeeper off the shoulder. The goalkeeper then is this is all predicted move by the way, and it's worked on in training. The goalkeeper then is maybe having to hit an outside of the right pass. 50 yards to a wing half forward coming on. Now that breaks down. Now you're probably still well enough set up because you still have six, eight players back. But you know, the next time you've got to run that move, the kick pass mightn't be on. You've worked it so much in training. Can you play the game differently? I just think we are throwing a lot, a lot at goalkeepers, a lot. And at the end of the day, what is the role? The role is to, you know, keep the ball in the net and to, to win your restarts or to work on your restarts. It's not here. If we can score, it's brilliant. But I think some club teams now are just copying what the county teams are doing and throwing an outfielder and nets because they're slightly more comfortable in the ball. But at the end of the day, if shots are going to start raining in or high balls are going to start raining in, you're, you're going to want your goalkeeper in there. Yeah. Have you any questions there? I think you sort of covered them. I'd sort of looked at... Elaine, what would be the main differences, you know, coming from, you know, the ladies' game into the men's? Because the rules probably are starting to get a lot closer now, but even in terms yeah. of working, working with men and working with women and... Yeah, well, I suppose there's not there's not a huge difference in the role. Like, I suppose the, the big difference, like we spoke about earlier on, is that, like, the distance that... that that men can get in the kickouts number one they get, like and, and kickouts are so important in both games like it's it's hugely important because the shorter kickout is coming in an awful lot and in, in, is, is an awful lot in men's game as well um and i suppose like the the just the physical size of the men they're 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 huge compared to compared to working with the women you know and they they have um they are able to get around the goal much quicker and get her get around like with women you will be like we're much smaller in the goal so like you'd be dealing with a lot of like even your positioning is so important because you have to be able to get back if a high ball if a ball comes in to those those ones that loop in over your head you know you have to work really hard on them for the for for the, the women whereas the men rarely now i think there was one shown on sunday yesterday, game last night yesterday. Or, <laughs> now now that i say it <laughs> Um, which is still like it's very unusual for it to happen to, to the men do you know what I mean like generally they're so big that's so tall that they're able to just they're able to catch the ball they're nearly like our goalkeeper last against against um, Cavan I think or was it Cavan I think he like stopped a, a point like do you know what I mean like and like the, these kind of things they have to be like you don't even you can't even consider that in, in ladies because you know we're not that tall but like so there's just the main difference is really but like in terms of that, their physical strength and their physical size are much big, much much bigger and much stronger. But uh, but like the actual techniques and the actual um, playing of the game is quite similar because, like you said, the working working back, like I said, they have to be a goal, they have to be good footballers. So like the the ball is coming back to the ladies an awful lot more. They're getting involved in the in the game an awful lot more. Shot stopping is all about positioning as well. You know your kickouts are so important. You have to work as a team there. Um, and the short kickers kickouts are much more prevalent now in the men's as well as the men women and like. The th but I, I, it's still probably more important for the women because, like I said, the distance is so different. And like if you're struggling with with kickouts with men, you can just try go for for length. Do you know what I mean? Whereas you don't have that luxury in with the women. Do you know? So I suppose they're the main differences really. Um, but generally, like the the basics are exactly the same: catching the ball, distributing the ball, reactions. The whole lot are exactly the same. Like you know. Brilliant. Folks, we'll have a couple of questions that I'm going to take. A, a, we're, we're, we're flying on in terms of time. So I have a Google that I thought was very interesting. Let's come in there. So if there's any more, you can send away. But the first one is, um, as a small club in the, could you train the keepers from under 12 to under 17s? Or would you advise train keepers at individual level? What's your take on this? Um, I wouldn't have any problem training them together. They're not going to be they're not going to be like attacking each other. Do you know they're going to be doing the basics the basics together. It's just about, like you could extend it a little bit for the for the older ones, make them extend the the throw a little bit more. Um, but I would have no problem personally going from under twelve to under seventeens. But like you just extend the older girls as much as you can um, in the same drill because the drills are the same thing. Do you know? Aiden, what about yourself? No, I, I agree. I agree hundred percent there. I just think it it's making it a lot easier time wise for you as well. If you're gonna be working working with the girls, 
I think people find goalkeepers are a real good support network for each other as well. It's not like, you know, two wing half backs or two corner forwards going for the same position. Yes, they'll be disappointed one's not starting, but I think everybody realizes the sort of magnitude of the position. If they make a mistake, you know, you just want the world to, to swallow you up. So I think goalkeepers are a great. They're a different breed, as you said, Claire. Yeah. But they, they really are a different breed. You see our ones running around on bag or thick as thieves, their best mates, even yeah. though they're they're against each other, but I think there's a serious respect there. And I think here, those younger girls that under 15 or under 13 or under 12 can be looking up to those girls or maybe the minor goalkeeper as well. I think it's brilliant. I think we would obviously just be careful. Like you wouldn't be drilling a ball at a 12 yeah, no. or 11 year old. You know, you could be doing all the reaction drills and the movement drills and keeping them per, but keeping it player appropriate. Yeah. You wouldn't be drilling a ball at yeah. a 13 year old or, you know. Having the right ball as well. You're not yeah, using yeah. size four with your under 11 or your under 12 as well. So it, it like, but there's, as you say, in terms of loads of the reaction and footwork and even to have wee tips of practicing under the high ball, but making sure if you are doing that, Mary, that you do it in terms of the appropriate ball and the appropriate force being used, etc. you know, as we go along. Um, so we have another question in here. It's saying that they're a goalkeeper themselves and they struggle mentally when they make a mistake and um, find it very difficult to get their head back into the game. In the play county and find the pressure in very very pressure. Um, any tips on how to manage the pressure pressure or how to get out of your own head? Uh, look, I think that's brilliant and really honest. Um, mm. thanks it's, for that question. A, yeah, it is a really it is a really hard one to be honest because like it just comes with. I suppose it comes with maturity as well as you get older and older, like you can you make you make mistakes, you make them and everyone makes them. Like I remember, like I remember once like in an all Ireland semi-final, I dropped the ball into the into the net, into the net, like literally a high ball went, dropped it into the net. And like well, like 10 minutes later, my full back did exactly the same thing, turned around and picked up the ball and went on, and nobody noticed it. Do you know what I mean? Um you, but the the big thing that I but I did personally when when I was um, after making a mistake like that, is I remember even after that day, um, one of the, we had a we had a stats guy there at, at, at half time. It was before half time that I made the mistake, and half time he came into me. He said, "Look, well, like obviously you made a mistake, but well done because you kept talking to your defence, you kept talking and kept yourself in the game. I think that helps me. That that's just me. Like that's what I used to do. If I made a mistake, I'd continue to make sure that I was talking and I was getting involved in in the in the game or telling tell, helping the girls or something. It just get my got my head out of it or got my head back into where I was playing. Where you know out of the mistake that I made and into the game, ready like to try and forget about it. And like yeah, after the game, I just thought about it and got a bit annoyed at myself or whatever, and tried to work it the next day or whatever. But like talking to, to your to like talking to your your backs are talking to encourage your forwards or encourage somebody just to keep your head out of what you were thinking and I just I think that would that help me personally anyway and um, maybe it did something different but I, like that's what I what I used to do it's really about a reset in the mind Elaine isn't it yeah. it's but it's you're going to have to work out what resets it for you because everybody's individual as well so yeah. but you know a lot of people would be using trigger words or, you know. Yeah, and even even some people like used to kick the kick the side of the the goalpost like, and that was it gone. Like if I once yeah. once I was gone, I'd like hit the hit my hit my boots off the side of the goalpost. And I'm after I'm after forgetting it, or you know, or even just smacking your hands together, and and that was it. My mistake is gone. I'm after putting a line under it. But for me, it was just talk. Yeah. <laughs> and Aidan, what about you? I've made plenty. Um... No, I think I've been in, it's funny how it can affect you. I remember after a championship game and we actually won the game, a big, it was an Ulster club game and I'd made, it wasn't even that bad a mistake, but I was just so disappointed. Everybody was away out and I just went and got in the bed after the game. That's what I'd done. Like you're just in that. It's just funny how it affects you, but experience, like I'd make a mistake now. I would sort of just, that's just life. That's it. We get on with it and you keep, it, it's important because when, when I was younger and it might be what the girl asked the question as well, you go mute from going from full talking and your defenders are looking around thinking, oh, there's something definitely wrong here if, if you've gone quiet, but just find something that find something that suits you. Like I've read plenty of books and it's pick up the bit of grass and let it blow in the wind and that's it. Or as you say, kick the post or slap your gloves. 
every everybody's different but the talking thing was the main thing right let's get back in the game let's get back in the game and it was always my, my thing always was you will make mistakes every season you're going to make a mistake my thing was how many mistakes can I limit that to right we have 20 games this year can I get away with sort of two three blatant mistakes and if I make a mistake you make sure the next one doesn't happen again so a certain high ball comes in and a man is beating me in the air that week, I'm I'm down in training the Tuesday and the Thursday night, and I'm getting her tallest midfielder, and I'm getting the man to lob the ball, and then I'm thinking this is the same thing's not happening again. The same thing is not happening this weekend, and and it just seemed to always has, has worked out that that opportunity will come again the next game or two, and you've done the work and it works out fine, and you know you're thinking why why was I why was I in a bad mood all week and grumping around the house over over something to get, and I think it worked for me big time as well. Was it's only football. It's only that's football. Yeah, I was just going to say. It's not, as I would tell you, you're not performing on heart surgery. You're not flying a plane. <laughs> you're not sitting the biggest exams of your life. It's a 60 minute match. And you know what? Yeah. No one's even going to remember it at an hour after the game. Yeah. No one's going to remember it. And, and I think this maybe brings in the next question. So, and somebody else has come on, the guy, I'm a goalkeeper myself, and they had a match at the weekend. And this is common. The, goal, the, the day as the goalkeeper shouted to full back, uh, one of the girls in the full back line, and she thinks she's really annoyed at her. How do we deal with that? Like that situation <laughs> happens. Yeah, well, like I suppose, like uh, we, when when we I, when I used to, I used to nearly talk to my goalkeepers, we would try like try, you'd be shouting at them to come back, all right. But you're like like what Aiden said, like they'll have forgotten about it after yeah. ten minutes. Joe, once once you once you talk about it, like once it's said, once it's forgot, once you. Like even if it's if it's before half time, at half time it'll be forgotten about. You know, you just need to. I suppose um, I, I I the girls might say, "All right, I hear you. Like I'm getting you. I can understand what you're saying." But like you maybe even have a signal for them to say, like if you're give a call that that they've heard you, even just a thumbs up or something that they know that they've heard you. That you don't need to. They don't need to. You know, argue argue back at you because yeah. I suppose the last thing you want to be doing on the pitch is to be shouting at each other as well. But I suppose if they if you don't know that they've heard you, you're not you're going to keep shouting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I suppose you just need to have some sort of a signal or something small like a thumbs up or a hand in the air to say yeah I seen you I heard you and that's fine. You know that they either then it's up to them then to listen to you or not. Do you know what I mean? So like if they've heard you, there's no point in shouting again. That kind of a thing, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of goalkeepers be. saying here that their back line is giving out to them for, for shouting up, shouting out a lane. So I think, you know, yes, give the signal, but possibly don't let it fester because I know what girls can be like. Uh, you know, the dirty looks are flying. Uh, you know, as a co- <laughs> but even <laughs> at half time, even if it's a half time or straight after the match, just go straight up to them and goes, Yeah, Jesus, why weren't you chatting? Why did you, why did you give me a thumbs up? Tell me that you yeah. were, that you were, that you heard me or whatever. Or like, sorry, I didn't mean to shout at you that time. It was just, I was frustrated or whatever. I needed to, I needed to see you, you back and I thought that you didn't hear me or something like that. You know, just to kind of make sure, like you said, that it doesn't fester because, um, uh, we know what girls are like at the, as you at a younger age. It can be very hard, you know. And and when they if they are sharing, uh, she's like she's not listening to you because she knows that she's maybe that you know she's after in the wrong base or whatever. Um, and she shout back at you. You just you just talk about it and maybe come come with up with some sort of a solution that will help both of you. Yeah, and I have another, I thought, I think this is another good question as well for you. Have you any wee tips on increasing distance in your kickout? I think, yes. I think. Practice, I, I, like the most, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Practice. Sorry, I, my, my coverage yeah. is probably bad. I Go think, ahead, yeah, I think it is. It has to be, it has to be practice off both feet. Mm-hmm. I think as well. Most clubs teams now, you're looking in the men's team, all are doing a bit of strength and listening. It's really coming into the ladies' game as well. But your goalkeeper stuff should probably be slightly more hip, hamstring, leg, instead of, oh, they still have to do loads of upper body, but it definitely should be a lot in groins, hips, glutes, hamstrings. So, you know, there's no point in your club maybe paying out. You know, you've got some maybe 10, 15, 20 grand a year for one generic program. It should be, your goalkeeper should be probably slightly different if you're going to be getting buck for bang or bang for buck, whatever that saying is. No, but it is, that's only the, that's only the final 10%. 
the 90% is, you know, we all know when we strike a ball well when it hits that sweet spot and it's hitting that sweet spot nine times out of 10 and not slicing the ball four or five times and a half, which is which where the damage can come from. So it definitely, it's all down to practice. Even against the wall, you don't even need anyone else. And the ball catchers was always a brilliant one. I always think you're not going to have the ball. Elaine, would Sorry, you have ever like put out targets or cones or anything like that to try yeah. and help your distance to sort of try and get it? Yeah, like even even just to get into like so I would have like even just just two poles or two cones, um, like on, on like two in the left, two in the center, two in the right, or whatever. And your your aim is either to go through the cones uh with one bounce for a shorter one, or maybe for a longer kick, go with the, through the cones without bouncing until, pa- until it's gone past the cones. So like, again, you could gradually, like, do you know what a free taker will take a free, they'll start, when they're, when they're starting their frees, they'll start at 13 and they'll get three yeah. over the bar and they'll move back. They'll get three more over the bar, up to the 21, all the way to the 45. That's exactly the same thing that you do as a goalkeeper. So you start with it closer inside and then you work and you work on getting it outside. And like you can go to your left, to the centre, to the middle, and you would just do, once you get three in a row, then you move back, move it back another little bit and try and get a bit further. But yeah, that's what I, like, it's just through cones. Like I would use, would have used channels kind of thing. Like, so you're going through that channel to get to kick the ball out. And that sort of like brings me on to the next question. Somebody's asked here, what do you think is more effective? And, and I'm not sure if this is personal choice or what. Off the ground or out of the hands as a goalkeeper, what's more effective in your opinion? It depends on the goalkeeper, really. Like for me, I was always I was always um out of my hands. I see this, I've only seen in our club in our um county with the Green Tipperary here, I've only seen one goalkeeper kick it out of off the ground and has done it fairly effectively but with men like I, I see the difference with men because they're I just think they have stronger kicks like yeah. they, they like uh, if they don't get it if they don't kick over a 45 it's it's not you know it's 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 unusual for them not to kick a 45 whereas here with ladies you get two points if you kick a 45 because it's very very rarely happens so like you're not going to get the distance um if you I just think you've more accuracy for ladies and in, in 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 for me and me personally I had more accuracy when I was out of my hands you know but it's, again it's personal choice like if you're practicing on the ground you want to be better on the ground if you're practicing out of your hands you want to be better out of your hands you know it all depends on what you're practicing so folks we've hit the hour mark which is brilliant so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just ask both of you to wrap up so like just a wee wrap up message for you so Aidan I'll, I'll knock over to you first I'm a goalkeeper on here tonight. You know, what's the, the big message you want me to have leaving, going home, um, or, or key message? Or piece of advice? Did you say you were? You weren't coming to me first, Claire? I am, Aidan. I'm coming to you <laughs> all first. Right, sorry. All your, all your uh, knowledge. I see you writing all the paper, all uh, the things in your bit of paper. I thought you were going to show me a diagram. I thought that's what uh. was coming up. I jot everything down because I forget everything. Um, I just believe believe in your own ability. There's going to be times, times are going to be tough, but it's it's how you come back from that. You will make mistakes. I think that's a big thing. That is a big thing. Young goalkeepers, I think, struggle to deal with. You will make mistakes, but make sure it doesn't fester into two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a game. Have confidence in your ability. If you do the work, if the work is done, if you think, well, you know what, I did practice my kicking this week. Uh, two days and you know what I stayed after training or I was there early and worked in the high ball the work's done you'll be ready to play the games your confidence will be high it's when you haven't done the work when those doubts the doubts sort of seep in so if you do the work you'll get the rewards it's it is it is that simple and it might be tough because your club mightn't provide anything for you to be a goalkeeper but that's where you have to be strong and and demand it because here I'm picking a team now I'm picking a team to go out and play in the Ulster Championship the morning, the men's, or I'm picking a team, picking a team to go out and play in the, the Ulster Ladies Championship. To me, the goalkeeper is the most important position that I'm picking. It, it's, that, that is where it's at now. So it, it's a really privileged, specialised position. And boys, girls, everybody deserves deserves their fair share of coaching, coaching on it as well. So if you're not getting it, be strong and demand it. And your club coach will love that. Your club coach would love to give you more help and support. So... That would be my sort of two cents. 
So you're saying be strong, be confident and ask for the help and support when you need it because you're you're the most important player in the pitch. So yeah. you would know you're <laughs> you would know you're a goalkeeper. <laughs> and Elaine, what about you? Yeah, I can't say much more than 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 what Aidan said, but I suppose uh, making sure that you're confident, making sure that you're you're, you're out practicing. Um like if you're not like Aidan said, if you're not getting it at a club, just find it, find a wall, do it at home. But like demand it off the club ask them can you get it at show a bit of confidence and you know like everyone and everyone will make mistakes in every walk of life but at the end of the day I think just to get over them when when we do make them and how you to build, build a bit of resilience when that if if it does happen that you will just get on and get up with it and um like just plenty of practice and talking uh talking to your coaches and asking them for a little bit of help um will improve your your um, ability as a goalkeeper hugely folks you were both brilliant i must say i learned so much um you're inspiring me to be a goalkeeper here. Uh, I, I think the big message I'm coming away with is that you do agree that you're all a bit mad, but uh, have that confidence <laughs> to, to ask for help. Don't, don't let yourselves not be out there. If you were the, the star forward, you would be asking to be able to hit your freeze. You would be asked for one-on-one. So as the goalkeeper, don't be afraid to say that. And when you communicate with players, don't let it fester. You know, make sure it's done in the right way. You're communicating with the team because you want cover. So I think once you explain that to your, your players and the coaching and everybody in the team's on the same agenda, they'll not care that you've shouted. But the big thing I got out of that is both of the guys said, be specific. Don't just be shouting who's on 10, who's on 10, who's on 10. You know, you're, you're you know, Sinead, can, oh, you need to go on to 13. Can you meet 13? Close that angle. You're being really specific of, on the message you're delivering out. Um. Hopefully he's picked up one or two tips and that he's enjoyed that. So thanks very much, Elaine and Aidan, for all your time. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in. So that's us for the evening. Good night. Cheers, Claire. Thank you.